Hello, everyone. I have invited Cohen today to share his uh, experience with master thesis. So Cohen he graduated in the last semester from our master program, and he's currently working uh, at DNV. So uh, hi, everyone. Uh, about a year ago, I sat in your shoes uh, to write the master thesis, and I, I guess that most of you are still on the precipice uh, looking down at this abyss of uh, I need to write this massive uh, document. Um, and ho so hopefully I can give you some tips and uh, some things to pay attention to um, since I just finished it. And I'm actually still working on it since uh, it's going to be published, I hope. All right, so uh, just a quick agenda. I'm not gonna spend time on that. So who the hell am I? Uh, some of you may not know me. Uh, I'm Kuhn. I'm a Dutch. That's why I have a, a strange name. Uh, I'm an ex-Navy officer. So I spent five years as a seafarer uh, on the bridge. And then I, I left the Navy and I actually went to USM. And I did the maritime management uh, master, uh, but then uh, technical uh, specialization. Uh, and I graduated, like Minim said, in the, in the summer. Uh, and I now work at DNV. Uh, and I can attribute me getting a job at DNV uh, also kind of through my master thesis, since uh, one of my co supervisors was actually working at DNV. And I think that definitely helped me in getting uh, a job at DNV uh, since we were working quite closely on the master thesis project. Um, so I know most of you may be looking for jobs. So that's another way uh, of getting a job. Um, if you write a good uh, master thesis, so don't uh, don't uh, disregard it. That's just another tick in the box. Uh, you can see QR code. If you guys are interested in the thesis that I wrote, you can uh, scan that now or just take a picture of the slide and you can read up on the, it later. I got an A, so uh, not to be uh, not to be bragging, but uh, then you have at least an example of of what you can pro probably. Uh, of, of how you can write the master thesis if you want to try and get that same grade. Um, and what did I actually just probably what I did I what did I write about? I uh, you can see the picture actually. It's the uh, kind of summarizes my master thesis. I was working uh, in a project uh, with Steve Malam. He's now I think no longer lecturing at USN. He's at, uh, in Canada, uh, but he works very much on uh, human factors. Um, and he was uh, working on a, um, a project called OpenAR, uh, AR being augmented reality. Uh, and he was working together with the also School of Design and Architecture to develop uh, an AR interface. And you can, if I can just grab a laser pointer, you can kind of see that here. This is the AR interface uh, they designed. Uh, and what I did basically was overlay this interface onto various uh, traffic scenarios, uh, which I just used the Kongspec simulator at USM. Uh, and then I tested this these scenarios on uh, various uh, on participants uh, to see if that affected their situational awareness uh, and how it affected their head down and head up time. I don't know if there are seafarers in the room, but uh, one big problem is that there are so many screens now on the bridge that you're always looking down at like a radar screen or an active screen and augmented reality could be a solution then to to have seafarers be able to look outside and have a kind of overlay in the outside real world um, and thereby get all the data they would normally get from the radar. So I thought this was a super interesting project and very relevant, something that I've what I would have liked to use as well on the bridge. So I jumped on the opportunity to, to be able to write my thesis on this. And uh, it was ended up being a very fun project. It was an experiment, which is something not a lot of people do at USM, uh, but it was a bit more hard science, uh, which was fun to, to try out, uh, but also a bit more work. So let's say now, well, enough about me. Let's talk about you and your topic. This is probably the most important thing uh, about your master thesis. Uh, and I was just writing, talking about my topic. Uh, and as you can see, I was quite enthusiastic about it. And that's is something you should be too, because if you don't like your topic and you, you're you just writing it to, to write it because you have to write a master thesis and, oh, I'll just do this because it's 
it's easy or or whatever and, and you don't find it very interesting then sure you can finish it but uh, it probably won't be a fun experience um and then you're just kind of punishing yourself in that aspect so i recommend you probably already picked your topic so it's probably too late now but uh if you have picked a topic you like then uh, you can feel good about that uh but also i wrote in quite simple terms here but just know your topic so know what you're talking about and what you're interested in and your literature review will be a, a big part of this. Uh, but if you're reading the, doing a literature review and you actually have a find out you have a totally different picture of the of your topic than you thought you did, then um, then don't panic because uh, I had that too. Uh, and uh, and it just means that you're you're getting more knowledge about it and then uh, you can apply that to your master pieces. Be very specific in your topic. Uh, I think this is a kind of a classic. Uh, don't uh, be very general. So if it if it's already not specific enough and maybe your supervisor was kind of nudging you like maybe we should make it more specific then definitely take that seriously because otherwise you're just making a lot more work for yourself and um uh, when you pick your topic and again this is probably too late for you guys but maybe if it's still it's still relevant if if your topic is one of these that can either be publishable or or is interesting for industry so uh, my topic was quite interesting for dmv which is why i managed to get them on board um and that made it also more fun because i had more of a feeling that it was attractive uh for real real world application because i think a lot of people a lot of students struggle with like what's the point of my math pieces like no one's going to read it and it's going to be completely pointless and uh, it's only for this this grade uh well not necessarily if you put the effort into it and you write something that is publishable and something that industry could be interested in then then it can definitely have real world impact so keep that in mind and uh if I'll talk more about publishing at, uh, at the end of the PowerPoint because that's what I'm in the middle of now. Uh, and I can give some tips about that. Let's see here. So the next part is uh, the supervisor. So I'm starting with this because this is very important. Uh, I think the whole uh, master thesis uh, was made very uh more, a lot more enjoyable for me because I had a really good uh, connection with my supervisor. Um, so someone I could really easily ask dumb questions to and uh, uh, walk up to and uh, and have interesting discussions about. And, and he was also very interested in my topic. So this made the whole process a lot more fun, I would say. Uh, so definitely, you probably already have your supervisors now, but uh, if you have a good connection with them, then, then know that that's very good. And That'll smooth the process a lot more. And so I just wrote here a couple of things. So remember that they're just there to support and guide you and to review your work. Not all the time. Sometimes I'll get more into that later. And to generally point you in the right direction. But don't waste their time. I think uh, I think uh, when I was talking to some of my co-students uh, last year, I, I felt that some of them may have been wasting their supervisor's time somewhat. Uh, by maybe showing up to meetings and not being prepared or stuff like that. So keep them in the loop. Uh, don't expect them to do uh, your work for you, uh, but know that they're also there to help you. So your relationship with your supervisor is extremely important. So let's talk some more about that. So here are some uh, more practical tips. Um, so how I approached uh, the my supervisor and me uh, was that we had a structured a uh, bi-weekly meeting. So every two weeks, we had a standard date and standard time we would meet. And this was obviously flexible in holidays or whatever. But uh, we tried to keep that cadence so that you, he was always in the, in the loop of what I was doing. And sometimes I, I had a couple of times where nothing, I hadn't really changed anything. And then I just sent him an email like, no update, no need to meet. And then that was fine. But then it, we were at least in constant contact. And that I think some supervisors have uh, students that just disappear off the radar and then they maybe talk at the after like half a year and then oh yeah maybe you shouldn't have done it like that uh, so that's a, a thing I would recommend and I'm maybe a bit uh, a bit too structured but uh, I uh, had a separate PowerPoint for each meeting and this was not a big work it was just a standard PowerPoint setup and probably because of my military background it was set up like a military briefing um, and it was the same structure each time. So I had the same agenda each time with the important points I wanted to discuss. Uh, and this I recommend because then the meetings are efficient and quick and you don't waste your supervisor's time. 
And I always started with a general set prep. So just a couple points in what have I done the last two weeks and what do I plan on doing in the, in the order of priority. And then I discuss those points in detail. Uh, and then I always end with the same, I always ended with the same uh, uh, summary. So this kept the meetings very structured and very to the point and very predictable. And then I was able to get the most out of my supervisor uh, since his time is limited. So I wanted that half hour meeting to be the most efficient possible. So keep that in mind. Um, so I had standard meetings, days and times. I had a standard meeting agenda. I made a plan, uh, which I will talk more about later. And to avoid wasting the time. So I prepared these meetings. And I planned ahead, so I already knew what I kind of wanted to do after the meeting, but I just wanted to, to discuss it with them to see what their opinion was. So I w didn't come to the meeting and say, like, I've done this. What should I do now? It was kind of like, you know, come with a solution. And I think this was very helpful for my supervisor as well, was to, to have review milestones. So I would say, like, okay, I'm, I'm almost done with my literature review. I think it's ready for feedback. Uh, when can you look at it? When does it fit in your schedule? Because you do you don't have a lot of time. Uh, and then he would say, oh yeah, maybe next week around this time. And I would make sure that my literature review would be done at that time so they could immediately look at it. And that's efficient for you and efficient for them. So that's a tip. Just have like preset deadlines of when they can review it. And don't expect them to review it again. You know, you get one review moment and then that's it. Because uh, otherwise you're wasting their time, which is something you should avoid. I think Munim can agree with me on this. <laughs> All right, timeline. This is to avoid wasting your own time. Uh, very important. I think this helped me out a lot. Uh, make a timeline for yourself. And uh, I think all of you have had project management now and you learn how to make a Gantt diagram. Good moment to, to practice that and uh, make a Gantt diagram for, for your own project, which is your master thesis. I have an example later, which I can show you. Uh, but it's there to, to track your progress, keep you on schedule, and to manage your supervisor expectations. Because maybe your supervisor gets too enthusiastic and expects you to have your, oh, when is your literature review ready? Uh, are you done yet? How far have you gotten? Uh, this way, you can also communicate to your supervisor. No, I gave myself a couple months to do this. You agreed to that. We agreed on this plan together. So give me some more time. Uh, and don't think that your timeline is set in stone. It can change. Uh, as all projects do, and mine definitely did as well. So don't if, if you have to get off your schedule, then uh, or you can't stick to it. That's fine too. So don't worry about that. Uh, but then you know where where you have room to to expand or contract the time you need for certain sections. So this is the timeline uh, I had for my master thesis. So uh, if you haven't started already, then uh, <laughs> you can uh, start here in October. Uh, but I I think this was one of the best advantages I had is that I had already started my literature review in the beginning of September. Um, and I had it finished before Christmas, like finished as in like it was it was ready to go. It was it was good. It wasn't like a first draft. Um, so that that really gave me a, a leg up because some people started like just in January with writing and then they were basically full steam ahead for until May. And some people like that, but I like to uh, to be like I like it like it shows you here. I'm, I'm a very structured person. So uh, I like to have everything set up. Um, and this my supervisor also liked to have as well so that he knew, okay, I can expect the lit review done at around this time or you know, I ex expect the introduction to be done around this time. So we just had the same kind of picture. And also because I was doing an experiment with participants, dealing with humans is very uh, annoying, <laughs> unlike data, because uh, humans have schedules and uh, may not want to join uh, or participate. Uh, and I needed quite a lot of uh, participants and quite a lot of their time to complete my experiment. So my scheduling was even more important than I would than maybe some other projects. So um, keep that in mind put in a lot of time for participant recruitment because you'll always be disappointed with the amount of participants you end up getting. Uh, so maybe some general things. Uh, I think this is, the, this is the latest update of my timeline, which is also an advantage for you guys because then you can see how much, how much time everything kind of takes. 
So my literature review actually took longer than I thought it would. I thought I would be done in around the beginning of December. But uh, it was, uh, it, I think it always takes longer with everyone because it's just such a big piece and so integral to the whole thesis. Um, so don't worry if that takes a lot of time. It's better to do it properly than to rush it. Um, and I can talk more about the literature review later. And for those of people who are do dealing with personal data, uh, you have uh, something called the NSD application. I'm not sure if, if you have already had a lecture about that, but uh, in summary, it's, uh, it's you have to apply to be able to, uh, you have to basically show the Norwegian government that you can deal with uh, personal data. I won't go into too much detail about that. I think Munim can explain it or it's already been explained, but begin with that early as well, because that could take some time. And if you can't start with data collection until you finish that. So that's quite important. Um, anything else here? No. Uh, uh, Quinn, have, yeah. Yeah. Here, one, one of the things I would like to highlight and which I really like is that you see, you started with the literature review in the beginning. Yeah. And you started with the introduction a bit after you started with the literature review, right? Mm -hmm. This is yeah. something I really like. And this is also something I do. You know, uh, I start with the literature review. I start with the literature search and uh, do the literature review. Then I come back to the introduction. Because if I start writing the introduction in the first place, often I don't know much about what's going on. You know, so <laughs> that helps me a lot. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that you did it like this. I don't know why you did it like this, but yeah, I'm happy to see it, that you did it like this. Yeah. I think it was my supervisor that was like, nah. I would just start the literature review and then you yeah. get an idea of what you're talking about and what you have to think about. And then uh, the introduction is uh, not that important. You can write that later. <laughs> you was, yeah. That's kind of how it went. <laughs> uh, yeah, exa exactly. I also have the same, uh, same recommendation for everyone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Uh, by the way, uh, this is a Zoom call, so I'll probably not see any faces and not get any questions. But uh, if there's someone who's brave enough, then just ask whenever. Like, I don't mind. I challenge you to ask a question because uh, otherwise it's just very passive and boring. All right, uh, writing the thesis. And I'll just talk about uh, some of the sections. I'm not going to go in a lot of detail here because uh, you'll get uh, lectures on this. But this is just kind of, I summarized my thoughts about each section. So, you know, introduction is just defining key terms, giving context uh, to the reader about what your project is about or what your thesis is about. And literature review, where does your research fit and what have others done? Make sure that no one has done the research you've done already or you want to do. Uh, although that can, that can help as well. I'll uh, talk more about that later. Uh, methodology, just simply how will you achieve your, uh, your research or your study? Results, just report it. I struggled a lot with this. Uh, I wanted to kind of blend my discussion and results together. But don't do that. Results are just just write what you found and that's it. So that actually should be quite easy. And discussion, uh, yeah, what do they mean in the greater context? So some practical tips and tricks uh, that I just kind of brainstormed from my experience. Um, so a lot of these are relevant to the literature review because I found that to maybe be the most tricky in the beginning to get started. And once you really get going, then the rest kind of flows. Um, but I, I really limited my review, literature review to Scopus and Web of Science, uh, through USN just to avoid like the plethora of other, if you just use like the USN library search, you just get so much other stuff that's maybe not relevant or not interesting. And Scopus and Web of Science are, are well regarded and, and can limit your search, uh, to just like good peer reviewed articles. Uh, so. And a little tip, save your search terms. So, uh, I know this is with Scopus, is that you can uh, save each search term you, you click into the, the search bar. And that way, because you saw how long the literature review takes, it took me like three months or two months. Uh, then you may be like, oh yeah, what did I actually search for? And how did I get these articles like that I've thrown into a folder somewhere on my computer? Uh, so then it's nice to be able to know exactly what you search. And I even included a small table in my thesis with like how exactly I searched for the my literature review articles, uh, which uh, is nice for the reader as well if they want to find them themselves. Um, use referencing software. I 
still cannot believe that I meet people that don't do that. It's it's absolutely mind boggling to me that you wouldn't do that because it makes your life so much easier. And uh, yeah, so just use it. I recommend Zotero uh, also because uh, it doesn't need a license. So after you graduate, you still have uh, Zotero and all the documents you save from there. Um, and also a tip, make sure Zotero saves the PDF. Uh, I think maybe, yeah, so in this is uh, the Zotero screenshot. You can see the little PDF markers. I didn't realize this until like halfway my literature review, but that means you can read the PDF in Zotero, which makes your life a lot easier than looking through all the folders that you get Peter like, oh, what was this reference in this uh, PDF? And uh, or go even worse, going back to the browser and, and trying to download the same PDF again, it's just, it just makes it a lot easier. So uh, make sure you're logged into your USN account when you do your literature review and then uh, and then you can uh, try get get scrape the PDF from the from the website. I use thematic folders in Zotero for all like the in my literature review to just capture big themes. Uh, so that if I was like, oh, I need a reference about augmented reality, or I need a reference for augmented reality usage in the maritime uh, industry, then I could quickly grab one from the folders that I may not have used before instead of scrolling through like a massive list of of articles. So that, that I thought was useful. If you haven't already, uh, install the Zotero browser add-on and uh, the word plugin. I think some people don't do this, but that means that when you're uh, on the, the website, you can just add the Zotero, uh, you can just add it directly to Zotero by just clicking on one button on the browser, which makes it a lot easier. And the word plugin is also nice to have because then instead of copy pasting in the references, you can just add a citation and create a bibliography directly in Word. That's this here. Uh, that's very handy as well. So I recommend that if you haven't done that. Use the USN template from the get-go. This one was quite difficult to find, uh, but it should be on Canvas if it's the same as last year. Uh, just handy. Uh, this took me a while to figure out as well, maybe because I was a seafarer and I hadn't written quite a lot, but uh, use the the captioning uh, uh, tool in Word. Otherwise, I had like 25 captions and then I would have to move a, a figure maybe earlier or later and then it became a big clusterfuck uh, if you didn't num use this because then the numbers wouldn't change automatically. So recommend. Use cross-reference. Cross to reference your captions so that you don't have to change the number manually each time because that becomes really annoying with editing. Uh, same with section headings. And keep control of your version numbers. You'll end up with a lot of versions of your thesis. And it's nice to, to have hard copies of each version so you can go back. So don't just have like one copy which you like rename each time, but try to make like, like saves, like hard saves um, of your uh, versions. But what I generally did was like each time I would add start a new section, I would make a hard save, or make a bit. If I every time I made a major edit, I would make a hard save, and every time I got sent it for feedback to my supervisor, I would get a make a hard save, uh, just so that I had these old backups, and then I I basically had in just old versions, and then that's why I would kept all the old versions, and then I always knew okay the latest one is is this one. It's the one in the my current version fallback uh, folder. Don't forget to backup. Cloud is good. Use a uh, OneDrive by USN if you don't have Google Drive or something. Um, I generally avoided using USN's uh, OneDrive because your account eventually ends, and then if you have everything there, then you lose it. Uh, so, and I uh, a tip for me as well. It's Sometimes you have some days where it's really good. You're writing and you have a good flow going and it's going well, And but you may not have enough time, but you have all these ideas. Then I just jotted down what my ideas were for each section. And so that next time, if I open my Word document, then I wasn't like, okay, what should I write now? And I have to think about it. I could just immediately jump in and work on those old ideas. So maybe that's just a trick as well or a tip. Okay. Some more tips. 
Um, so one thing that really helped me in the literature review was I found a literature review which literally covered the topic I wanted to do. Um, and it was recent. And then I, from that literature review, I could pull all the relevant articles basically um, that were relevant for my, uh, for my paper, for my thesis. So try to find a lit start with the literature reviews on your, your topic and then work in deeper from there. Also, what's very useful is find an article that has uh, done a similar or like the same kind of methodology as you. And then you can figure out what literature you have to read to cover that methodology. And you can even just reference the methodology and just copy it uh, or just follow that if you want. Um, I didn't, but you could do that. Um, Use the article, this is quite common, I think most people know this, but you know, you can use the references of relevant articles you find or recent articles you find to, to go deeper and deeper into a specific topic and eventually find like the original uh, reference so you can kind of work back in time and broaden the scope of a relevant article to, to, to uh, fill in your literature review. SPSS is free at USN. Uh, use that instead of Excel if you're doing data crunching. It's quite useful. It's quick. I had no idea how to use it when I first started, but it's relatively easy to learn. Um, <laughs> this is kind of a, a lame comment. I, I, I do admit, but uh, I just wrote my thesis like it was a job. Uh, I didn't have a part-time job. At the, at, well, I did actually, but uh, in any case, just get up uh, in the morning, work on your thesis until four or something, and then you're done. You know, you don't do like Unless that's unless you like working at like night or something or in the weekends, I just kept my weekends free and my my evenings free as well, and then I just worked in the pieces like it was a job, and that worked well for me. And there isn't really a word or page limit, I think, for the pieces. At least nothing that I remember. Uh, so remember, it's not leading. You don't have to write this like a hundred or sixty or two hundred page pieces. It doesn't make it better. Uh, try to keep it concise. And uh, again, for the NSD request start early. It takes a little while before uh, they accept it and you can't do any data collection until it's been approved. Uh, this has probably been mentioned already, but that's important. So then we have the presentation. Uh, so yeah, after your thesis, you have to present it. Uh, this is important as well. Uh, Again, some very basic stuff like know your thesis. Of course, you have to know your thesis when you present it, but uh, make sure you've read it thoroughly, uh, especially stuff you started writing like three months ago or four months ago. Uh, know the second reviewer, so you'll get an external reviewer. And if you know the name, you can kind of figure out their background and then know what kind of questions they'll probably ask. Uh, just a tip. Uh, practice the presentation. I mean, obviously. Keep track of time. They're very strict on time. So uh, really practice the time uh, as well because they'll just cut you off after 20 minutes. And to practice the most common questions. So I uh, put them here. This is what I got last year from the, the guy who was giving the master business presentation last year. Uh, and it's quite useful, so I recommend it. Uh, and don't underestimate the presentation. So some people are like, oh, I wrote my thesis, whatever. I'll just do a presentation. Uh, but it can affect your grade. And uh, you also look a bit dumb if you if you bomb the presentation uh, after you wrote a good thesis. So just to put some effort into it. It's not that much work. The publishing, probably not something a lot of people are thinking about right now. But uh, if you start early, it's it's uh, it's useful to know. But uh, if you're interested in publishing your thesis, then discuss it with your supervisor. And discuss uh, about who will be first or for second offer, that kind of thing. Um, uh, and if you decide it's not for you, you're not interested, then uh, you can uh, then you your supervisor could maybe publish it for you and then be first offer if you don't care anyway. So, um, but it's good to discuss expectations with the supervisor. I decided to publish uh, just because I wanted to see what it was like, and I was proud of my work, so I wanted to publish it. Um, and it's actually quite a lot of work, so don't underestimate that. Uh, you have to rewrite your entire thesis, and I think mine became only like 30% of the original size, so it has to be a lot shorter. And um, 
the whole process takes quite a long time. So I submitted mine for publication, I think before the summer, I think June. Yeah, June I submitted. Was insta rejected from the first uh, journal, uh, which was quite normal. My supervisor says they didn't understand my thesis, but I guess that's a failure on my part anyway. Uh, and then the second one, they accepted it uh, for review. And uh, I only just recently finished my response to the reviewers. So it can take a long time and I expect it to be published maybe in a month or two. Uh, so just uh, know that it, that takes a while. And then I obviously got a job during the summer and then I had to also do this publishing on the side. Uh, so it can take some time as well, but uh, I find it quite rewarding. Can I interrupt so that was a little bit? Yeah, <laughs> regarding publication. Yeah, it's it's really good to see your your thoughts and your your experience with publication. Yeah, so just wanted to share. Like we are also trying to. So I, I'm I'm also working with Fabian to uh, publish his thesis. So the first one we submitted, uh, we got a rejection with the review comments. So it went for review, then we got rejection. Then we sent to another journal. It was rejected in two days, this rejection. Then we submitted to another journal. We got this rejection in three days. Now we submitted to another one and it's under review. So you see the publication, we get rejections, but that's okay. Uh, my, my experience is that, you know, it's just this rejection doesn't mean uh, anything about the quality of the work, uh, okay? It's, it's more like match with the journal and your work. So the, 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 when there is a right fit, uh, you will get it published. Of course, then if, if, if there is a bad work that will never be published maybe, but in general, most of the times we get rejections is like, uh, it's not a good match. Okay, so yeah. And it's uh, very, very good to know, Cohen, uh, the work you are doing. So good luck with that. Thanks. And yeah. uh, let me know when you get it published. Our yeah, I think Stephen will let, let the librarian know anyway. But you mm -hmm. feel free to let me know also. I can also update the library, and they are very happy when uh, there is a work published from our master's work. You know, so yeah. Ah, great. Yeah. All right. Uh, then I'm open the floor for any questions that you may have. Um. And otherwise, I um, you can also just hit me up on uh, LinkedIn or send me an email or something.